This is a very brief look at using percentages to determine a load or training intensity of an athlete. This is a topic that I'm surprised a lot of coaches don't have a very good grasp of, as it's a very, very basic skill, one of the most fundamental skills in any trainer or coach. Like any method, there's some plus or minuses for using percents. Um, some of the reasons that percentages are good are that uh, it's well researched for decades and decades this method has been researched it's used by thousands and thousands of champion athletes there is a it's an opportunity to have very precise loading um, instead of just guesswork on do the best you can for five reps for example one that's very big for me is it helps control the athlete a lot of uh, times anyone who works with uh, high level athletes knows this, the problem isn't pushing the athletes, it's holding them back. So by, pres by prescribing a, a precise weight, this gives you an opportunity to control exactly how much effort they're putting in that day. Also, you can easily manipulate these for different individuals, as you probably know, percentages, 85% for one person can vary a little bit from individual to individual. And it's easy to make long-term plans or templates that can be reused. There are many gold medalist athletes that I know um, or know of that use the same program that has been used for years and years as people are familiar with in weightlifting, for example, Russian methodology or Bulgarian methodology. It changes very, it changes over time, of course, but very little when you look back at what was happening in the 70s and 80s and we look at what's happening now. A few of the weaknesses of this method is that someone's ability can vary day to day. Obviously a precise 85% one day is not a precise 85% the next day depending on sleep, nutrition, and many other factors. Abilities between individuals can vary. What uh, someone might be able to accomplish four reps at 90% of their maximum while the next person can only get two and a half. Everyone's a little bit different with fast and slow twitch and all that stuff that you should know by now. Beginners improve very quickly. I don't like using percentages with beginners because if you have very little experience in a given exercise, you're going to advance rapidly. So 80% of your max one day, two weeks later may only be 70% of your current max. So I like to use percentages with established athletes. It can be time, time consuming to create uh, precise loading using percentages if you're just starting from scratch. Of course, with modern computer programs, I can think of one called Moji that uh, make this much easier. And it's not as accurate for complex lifts. The more complex a motion, the more difficult it is to prescribe a precise percentage. Uh, doing a precise per percentage for bench press is easy as it's a very simple lift. For a clean and jerk, it might be more difficult as there are many factors involved, as it's a much more complex movement. There are many of these charts available. Uh, in fact, if you're a coach, you should have many available to yourself and online. Uh, this is just a very, very basic guide, as you can see how it's broken down by the load and how that affects the repetition ability. Keep in mind there's variation between individuals. So one person they can do five reps at 85% as mentioned before, that might not be the same for all of your athletes, especially across different sports and experience levels, of course. So your responsibility as a trainer or a coach is you must know how to adjust uh, the percentages for a training purpose. Um, that can be different than simply taking 85% of a max. You have to know what conditions those, that maximum occurred under and what you're trying to accomplish with your training. If you're trying to get three reps with 90%, but you're doing three sets, you're not going to be able to maintain that for all three sets. Only on your first exercise are you really giving 100% of what you have that day, first set of the first exercise. Then you're slowly getting fatigued as the workout goes on. 
So a coach needs to be responsible and knowledgeable enough to know how to adjust these percentages to keep them realistic as you go through the workout. Because oftentimes you don't want an athlete to put maximal effort into every single set. As you should know by now, that is not the most effective way to get stronger or faster. You have to know the difference between, as I mentioned before, uh, the types of maxes, a, a calculated max, a normal testing day, or the best day this athlete's ever had. For example, you can calculate your max from a set of five, and that's going to give you a very good idea of what an athlete's capable of. Or you can test a true max, and they will hit around a predictive number. However, Sometimes you have a great day and if your maximum bench press is let's say 200 kilos and you get 210 or even 215 kilos on the perfect day where everything, the stars align. I don't think that's a very good representation of your true max if normally your prediction is coming out closer to 200 kilos. So you have to be a bit have the ability to know, okay, that was a very special day. If you just plan the next phase of training around that number, you're going to run into some problems. Especially if you've made a long-term plan, adapting is one of the most important things. Of course, athletes are gonna have off weeks, but it is important to be able to adjust as you go through the program. If you have a program that's made mostly from percentages and everything's predicted and everything's assigned, weights and repetitions, it's very tempting to just tell the athlete to be a machine and get through it, but that does not always work. A good coach knows when things are getting off track and it's time to reset. And if you have a 12 or 16 week program, it's kind of heartbreaking to know that you have to sit down and start all over again or get halfway through it and start adjusting every percentage, but that's your job as a coach. And that's a mistake I see a lot is just letting people fail through a program instead of adapting the program because in one way or another, the athletes adapting or failing with the program. Next time, I will show you how I use Moji to use percentages in creating short and long-term programs.